morning, and thank you for joining me here this uh, morning in my uh, executive chambers as we discuss the availability of county residents to prepay their taxes for 2018. Uh, I am joined by our county controller, Stefan Heil, the chief fiscal officer for the county. Uh, the, of course, the county attorney, Michael Saragusa, our budget director, Bob Keating, and our director of real property tax services, Joe Macieski, uh, because there's a lot of information we need to provide that uh, is uh, for the public's knowledge about what they can and cannot do. Now, the reason we're here is because of the passage of the Tax Reform Act, which uh, limits the amount of deductibility of uh, property taxes as well as state and other local taxes pursuant to this new uh, rule. In the future, you will be able to deduct up to $10,000 combined of state and local taxes, whether it's property taxes, income taxes. And we put some signs out here. We got this information from the National Association of Counties. And the average assault deduction in Erie County was $12,866. So we do know that people on average pay more or receive more in the deduction than what they'll get in the future, uh, which is the $10,000 deduction limit. Uh, last week, Governor Cuomo signed an executive order which gave uh, counties and other municipalities the availability to allow the prepayment of taxes. Uh, we would not normally have been able to do this because the way the system is built in Erie County, including our charter, and uh, administrative code, as well as what's called the Erie County Tax Act. Uh, normally, taxes could not be paid until January 1st because of a very complicated formula of how the taxes are declared, uh, how they're signed off, how they're transferred to the towns and cities for collection. Uh, but because of uh, Governor Cuomo's executive order, we were able to expedite the process. So uh, Mr. Macieski had his staff come in yesterday, some of them who were already slated to be uh, off for the uh, vacation and the Christmas holiday to prepare what are called tax warrants. These are specific documents that note the total amount of taxes that are to be collected in a particular municipality. And those tax warrants had to be signed by the chairman of the Erie County Legislature and the clerk of the Erie County Legislature before they could be transferred to the various municipalities. So once they were completed and, and printed, uh, Mr. Macieski had Chairman Mills as well as uh, the clerk, Karen McCarthy, signed the tax warrant so that he could then electronically deliver them to the various municipalities. And that was done yesterday and, and finalized and completed this morning. So we are uh, telling folks that they can prepay their 2018 county, town, and city taxes, not school taxes, because we have nothing with regards to school taxes, but there's a very complicated method in which you can do it. First. Do not come to County Hall to prepay your 2018 taxes unless you live in the city of Buffalo. If you live in the city of Buffalo, you can prepay your city and your county taxes in County Hall at the, the property tax collection office on the first floor of the Rathbone. If you live in any other municipality in Erie County, you, the only way to prepay your taxes is to go and pay it at your local clerk or tax collector, as would be the normal situation that would occur once taxes are issued in January of any year. Why is that? Because that's the protocol that we follow, uh, and that's the, what legally we have to do. The governor's executive order allowed us to expedite the process, but it did not change how taxes are normally collected. So when it comes to prepayment of 2018 county and City of Buffalo taxes, you, if you live in the City of Buffalo, you can come down to, to County Hall. They will tell you how much you owe, and you can prepay your taxes. If you live in any other municipality, including the cities of Lackawanna, City of Tonawanda, the 25 towns, you have to pay at your local municipality in your, in your clerk's office or your tax collector, depending on what you have in each of your towns. So if you live in the town of Amherst, you will, should not come downtown to prepay your taxes because we cannot accept them. Only the town of Amherst clerk can accept them by law. Uh, and in some of these communities, they may not know exactly how much you owe for 2018 because those documents are still being transferred to the various municipalities. So what we're telling folks is, uh, if you want to prepay your 2018 taxes, you have now been given the opportunity to do so. However, if you live anywhere other than the city of Buffalo, do not come down to County Hall to prepay your taxes. 
you live in Chictawaga, you should pay it at the Chictawaga Town Clerk's Office. If you live in Tonawanda, you should pay it at the Tonawanda Town Clerk's Office. If you live in Buffalo, you can come down to County Hall and do it. Just the county taxes. Uh, two other things. If you have never itemized your deductions before on your income tax, there probably is no reason for you to prepay your taxes because you're not going to get a benefit. If you've never itemized before, with the new tax rates and deductions that are going into effect, about $24,000, uh, it's doubtful that you need to itemize your deduction, your itemized deductions in the future, and you probably don't need to prepay your taxes. Uh, the other thing is if you have an escrow account, and most people who have a mortgage have an escrow account in which the money is uh, calculated, it's taken out of your mortgage on a monthly basis, and then the payment is made. Uh, our understanding is the lenders, the mortgage lenders, are not going to prepay. You can prepay, but you're probably, your mortgage lender is going to pay the taxes when they were due anyway on the date that they normally pay, whether it's February 2nd or however they have it loaded into their system electronically. So you should contact your mortgage lender, uh, but our understanding is they are not going to prepay. If you want your taxes prepaid, you're probably going to have to pay them first, then take a receipt and show your mortgage lender that you paid their taxes, and they still may pay them again, at which time we would refund the money or the clerks would refund the money uh, to the mortgage lender. Very complicated. Finally, before I turn it over to the controller and then also to Mr. Macieski to address it a little more, uh, we make no guarantee that if you prepay your 2018 taxes, the IRS will accept it as part of your 2017 tax return. We are giving you the option uh, under the governor's executive order on what we're doing in Erie County, but we make no guarantee that they will then allow that as a deduction for your 2017 tax return. That is up to the IRS. And it's quite possible if you, if you in prior years, let's say, had ten or $12,000 as the average SALT deduction, and in 2017, now it's $17,000 because you prepaid your 2018 taxes for your town and the county, they may look at that and say, this should be audited. So we make no guarantee that if you do prepay that this is actually going to be deductible to the IRS. That's up to the IRS. Uh, we're giving people an option to prepay, but we don't know if the IRS will allow that prepayment. The governor signed the executive order. We're doing everything possible to ensure that our citizens have the ability to prepay. So if they would like to include it as a deduction in their 2017 taxes, they can. But it will then be up to the IRS to determine whether the deduction is valid. Um, uh, I'd like this time to uh, allow the controller an opportunity to speak uh, as our chief financial officer. Uh, our offices have worked together to allow this process to, to occur, and I thank him and his office for their, their work in this and for allowing our local taxpayers the opportunity to prepay their taxes if they so wish over these final few days of the year. So, controller? Thank you. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, yeah, the county executive is right. Our respective offices have been working in a bipartisan manner to make sure the taxpayers do have this option. Uh, my office received numerous calls from taxpayers and financial planners on what the process would be and what taxpayers could do if they wanted to take advantage of it. So all of our respective offices, the Office of Erie County Controller, Office of Erie County Executive, and our legal department were having communications even before uh, the executive order was made by the governor on what the possibilities were pertaining to taxpayers. Uh, it was a difficult process, but in a bipartisan manner, we got it done. We got it done together. Uh, the county executive, yours truly, county attorney, were even communicating over the weekend about staff, trying to reach out to individuals to make sure that people were in place over the holiday to execute this. It was not an easy process. Uh, but we have a good working relationship between the Office of Erie County Executive, uh, the Controller's Office, and the County Attorney's Office. And I'm incredibly proud that we got it done, and we got it done done together. Uh, taxpayers <coughs> do have the option uh, to pay early if they so choose. Uh, and as I said before, it wasn't an easy process. Uh, and Joe Macieski, I give a lot of credit. A lot of his employees actually came in over the holiday uh, working off hours to make sure that the system was in place here in Erie County to at least have the option for taxpayers uh, to get this done. So I'm incredibly proud of the bipartisan efforts that we engaged in. 
uh, to make sure the taxpayers did have that option. We worked together, we worked closely, uh, and I'm happy to say that at least if taxpayers want to pursue this option, they certainly could. Thank you very much. Thank you, Controller. Uh, I echo the remarks of the Controller with regards to the Office of Real Property Tax Services, as well as our legal department. Uh, there was a lot of work that was done in a very short period of time once the Governor signed the Executive Order. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of notice about the Executive Order. I got a call uh, earlier that morning saying that the Governor was going to do this, and we started having a conversation about what could be done uh, if that was signed. And in a very short period of time, uh, the, uh, the Director, as well as the County Attorney, were able to turn things around, and I specifically thank uh, Director Maciejewski. Uh, his uh, office, uh, as I said, a number of people came in on days that they originally scheduled off to ensure that the tax warrants could be printed, uh, they could be signed by the chairman and the clerk of the legislature, and I do want to thank uh, Chairman Mills and uh, Clerk McCarthy for taking time out of their days to ensure that the tax warrants were signed in time. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, our, our Director of Real Property Tax Services, Joe Maciejewski, to talk a little bit more about the process and what people should expect whether they walk into County Hall or if they go into the local tax collector. Thank you. Go. Thank you. Uh, if taxpayers walk into the RAF building on the first floor to Erie County Real Property Tax Services, what they can expect is they will be given an exact number of what they owe for 2018. They will be given a handwritten receipt because the program right now is not issuing an actual 2018, as you can understand. <coughs> County taxes are also being collected in the city of Tonawanda and the city of Lackawanna, just like the 25 towns. Okay, that's very, very important. So if you're a county taxpayer in the city of Buffalo, you pay Erie County real property tax here. You can mail a payment in, and as long as it's postmarked by December 31st, which is in the executive order, we will we will record that as a 2018 payment made in 2017. Out at the towns, they collect the 25 towns, as the county executive has said, the 25 towns collect on one tax bill, the county and town taxes, okay? And the majority, at this point, they do not have exact figures. So you will have to most likely look at what you paid in 2017 and make the decision of how much you want to pay if you walk in there and are looking to prepay. We are getting them the numbers as we prepare, as you can understand, preparing tax rolls and bills for 25 towns and three cities. You don't just do that all in one day. The process takes time. So that's where we are right now. Uh, and if you have any specific questions, I would be happy to answer them. So the tax warrants are out for every city and town? Yes, they are. Where that collect county or county and town together. About what time did that all happen? Uh, those went out yesterday. I believe they got back to us about 3 o'clock yesterday. Three <coughs> so if somebody shows up to the town, you said they have to estimate. Some of them don't have the exact numbers. That's correct. Is there any rules as to how they are supposed to estimate that? Some towns are saying that you have to pay exactly what you paid last year, or 2017. Is that the rule across the board? That, that is going to be up to, you know, the individual taxpayer at this point. If that's the only number that they can give them, then it's a good point to be at. Because, you know, in some cases, depending on, you know, the bill could be a little higher, the bill could be a little lower. Then the town clerks would either refund an overpayment or when they get the bill, the taxpayers got to know that they have to pay the balance before February 15th. I, I, would, I would add, there is no rule for this situation because we've never had to deal with it before. Uh, we have rules in place, uh, they are in the Erie County Tax Act, but they all speak of making payments after January 1st of the tax year. This is the first time in anyone's memory where they're allowing a prepayment and it's based off of the executive order from the governor. The governor's executive order was a general order. It was not for specifics for every county because every county has different rules. They don't follow all the same rules. Uh, and to give you an example, Westchester County, one of the larger ups uh, counties in maybe upstate New York, depending on where you determine upstate to be, uh, but one of the largest counties in New York State from population wise, they issued an, an executive decision yesterday that they will not be accepting prepayment 
because of the issues associated with their own towns, city, of White Plains, and the other problems that they have. So not every county is, is allowing their taxpayers to do this because of the difficulties associated with it. So I would say in, in response to your answer, there is no rule with regards to the prepayment and in estimating an amount because it's never been dealt with before and we've had it in such a very short period of time we're trying to deal with this. Our goal was to get the warrants out the door, so to speak, so that the prepayment could be accepted. If someone's taxes in 2018, I'll just throw a hypothetical, were $2,500 and they pay 2000 they're going to be short by 500 and eventually they'll have to pay 500 If their taxes are 2000 and they pay 2500 well then eventually they will be refunded $500. It's as simple as that. Have you guys had uh, any conversation with the IRS? I know you said you don't know if the deduction will be accepted, but have you no. looked for an answer or gotten anything? No, but I, we have received information from the National Association of Counties that they are saying there is no guarantee at this point that the IRS will accept these amounts uh, as taxes paid for 2017. Now, if you look at the rules, it seems like if you pay the tax in that calendar year, the tax year, it's eligible for deductibility. The IRS is going to have to make the call on that. And so we are telling folks, we're not making any guarantee. And you may, because you now have this much higher amount, for your, your state and local tax deduction and for the 2017 tax year, that may subject them to look at you and say, maybe we should audit this. No guarantee whatsoever. You may not receive a benefit re because of this. They may say, no, it's not deductible. Uh, but we're giving people the option to at least try. If my get... municipality doesn't have my warrant yet, do I dare call Joe's office and say, give me a number? No. They have the warrants. They do not have the exact number for what each person owes. The tax warrant is the total amount to be collected in that municipality. So they have that. They do not have the exact numbers. We're trying to get those out as quickly as we can. And what you have to understand is there's a, normally a process, this is very complicated, we have class, towns of the first class, towns of the second class under the Tax Act, and they have different collection dates. I kind of want to go through sure. the towns of the first class, sure. the second, and the timeline. Um, your, your, your larger towns like your Amherst, Lancaster, Tonawanda's, okay, County of Erie, the collection dates are January 1 to February 15th without interest and penalty. Some of the smaller towns like a Newstead, okay, for instance, they would normally send out the tax bills around February 1st, and those are payable March 15th. So typically, those files and bills and warrants, okay, they pick those up at the end of January or early February. Right now, all 25 towns have their warrants. They were emailed, and if somebody said they didn't get it, they were emailed and faxed. So they have them, and they were put in the mail. So uh, they can, every, every town can collect, every single town. To be clear, are, is every town is every town allowing prepayment? Are you aware of any towns or cities that are not allowing prepayment? I am not. Where I heard the uh, where the rumor mill was kicking around, I personally called those town clerks, and they are collecting in a few of the towns that I've heard. But if uh, again, I haven't heard of any towns that are refusing. Uh, but you know, you don't know if that's going to happen. So, given how complicated this process sounds, at any point did you think? No, Erie County will not be participating? Well, I did speak to the governor's staff. I've not spoken to the governor on this, but I did speak to the governor's staff and explain the complications associated with it. And their response was, yes, we understand it's very complicated, uh, but we just want to give the citizens of New York an opportunity to prepay. Uh, do the best that you can. And this is the best that we can. As, as Joe noted, there are many towns in which they wouldn't even get their warrants and the information for their individual taxpayers until the end of January. So, and, and we were going under the assumption that we'd be doing the normal procedure. Uh, as you may have seen last week, we issued a release from my office stating that people are asking, can they prepay? And the answer was no, because the law doesn't allow it. The law says we can't even start accepting collections until January 1st. The governor signed the executive order basically <laughs> waiving the law as it pertains to New York State. So he then said, you can go ahead and do it. 
but do your best. And that's why some counties are not. Westchester County has elected not to do it because it's just too complicated based on their system. I know people are going to walk into tax offices and say, how much do I owe? And town clerks or tax collectors, depending on which one it is for the town, are going to say, I don't know. But we can look up and see what you paid last year, and we can, and, and then you could pay that amount. It may be more, it may be less. If it's less, we're gonna, you're going to have an amended bill, and you're going to have to pay that. If it's more, we're going to refund it. And it could be less because if the town did a, a reassessment and the assessment is now lower than it was the year before and they didn't change the tax rate, then technically your taxes would go down. For example, in Erie County, our tax rate is one penny lower than it was last year. So everybody who goes in and pays the amount they paid last year, if your assessment has not changed, will unlikely have paid a little bit more than what they owe in county taxes. How it's complicated, folks, but we're giving people an opportunity to pay. How likely is it that they'll have my exact amount if I wait until Friday instead of walking in today? Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that question, David. Uh, if, you come, if, you, if you live in the city of Buffalo, we have the exact amount we know. If you live in, in uh, one of the other towns, I can't guarantee it. Some of the towns are getting the information. So it's possible that they will have exact information. But as we said, we normally don't do the, the towns as they call them the second class. I don't want people to think that those towns are second class, but that's how they're categorized it's because population. It's, a population. it's a population. So a smaller town, a rural town, uh, we, we wouldn't even have thought of doing that work until second and third week of January. So we're in the process, as you can imagine, the people down in the tax office are working very hard to get that information out. Uh, the people who work at the front desk are expecting that a lot of people are going to come in with questions. Uh, we, we were hoping we were going to be able to have the exact amount online, but the system will not allow us to put it online until 2018. We're trying to change that, but as of right now, the system, because it is a procedure to protect uh, the system, does not allow the 2018 taxes to be put online until 2018. We never thought we'd have to deal with this. On that vein, people were asking whether or not they could pay online. And because it can't be put online, people... As of right now, they can't. So is that countywide? Well, for the online payment, only we would accept uh, those that are in the city of Buffalo. There's a different system for towns. Different, yeah. T towns use different collection software. So it's up to, you know, their individual vendors. Um, in in uh, some of the towns, we actually send the electronic file to the vendor. That's what they request. So, I, again, I can't answer on their behalf. I would, I would say it is... Very fair to say that you will not be able to pay online with any town or the county, at least until January 1st. Knowing you only have until the end of Business Friday to get this in? You could drop something, if, if you, you can drop it in the mail, as long as it's postmarked by the 31st. By the 31st. If people come to the offices, how have you discussed staffing? Because we are sandwiched between two holidays. Correct. Uh, we will have applicable staff and appropriate staff to man this here. I cannot speak for the other communities. Uh, I do know I won't name it, but there was one town that was planned on being closed for the whole week, the clerk and collector's office. They have given us their assurance they will be open, but they're going to be short-staffed because a lot of people take this week as a vacation week. So if you are going to your town, you should not expect it to be done in five minutes. You may have to stand there and wait for quite some time if other people show. I don't know how many people are going to take advantage of this. I don't think a whole lot of people are going to take advantage of this, but some people are, and we're giving those people the opportunity to do so. You and the Comptroller don't always see eye to eye on things. Can we what? comment on you guys working together are you here? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's fair to. This, <laughs> this is, <laughs> I don't want to stand near. <laughs> I, I want to serve as Comptroller, and I know that you don't always agree with the County Executive as Comptroller, and the County Executive doesn't always agree with what the Comptroller comes up with. But in a situation like this, you have to work with each other. Uh, when I was controller and Chris Collins was the county executive, even when I ran against him, we were working together on issues that our departments needed to work together for the benefit of the greater community. That's what you do. Uh, we're public servants. And, yes, yeah, sometimes you fight uh, during political races and you disagree on other issues, but uh, you have to serve the public's benefit. And this is an example where we talk to each other. 
I called his office last week to say we think we can do this now with the executive order. We need to ensure that everyone's on the same page. Can you help out? And we were able to do it because we're here to serve our public. Yeah, I, I know it's ironic coming from me uh, that a lot of times we do not receive a lot of credit from media or the public about the working relationship that we do have. Believe me, I know it, I've literally stood where you are standing right now and asked uh, that very question. We leave our politics at the door, period. And I can tell you so many instances of where the county executive and I have a phenomenal working relationship that benefits taxpayers. When my mother died, it was very sudden and shocking. And Mark called and says, hey, if you want my staff to come down to your office, I'll be more than glad to do that to help you. Uh, we recently have a new employee in my office, a CPA, that came from Public Works. And I made the same offer to the county executive in the administration, where this employee literally worked in both offices for uh, a few weeks. So we leave our politics at the door, period. We work for the people. And this is just a great example of many examples where we have a very positive working relationship uh, that benefits taxpayers. Uh, this is unprecedented. I asked our deputy controller this morning, when's the last time you've ever encountered an experience like this pertaining to tax bills? And he says, I've been in government for 30 plus years. Never. This is literally unprecedented within county government. We've been communicating with the county executive and here's truly all weekend. Uh, even going so far as to say, hey, can we contact this one staff person that you may know to make sure that we can get people in? Um, but I, I, I don't think we do get enough credit, and I will say this, for having a good, positive working relationship that benefits taxpayers. Yeah, we, we, have to, we have to work together on so many different things, whether it's closing bonds, uh, various issues associated with the various departments. And I've had, me having served as controller before, I understand the responsibilities and the work that you need to do to do it together. Just to give you an example of how unprecedented this is, when's the last time you heard people wanting to pay their taxes early? <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. And people do want to pay their taxes early to hopefully take advantage of a deduction that will, as you can see, the average SALT deduction in 2015 for Erie County taxpayers was nearly $13,000. The total SALT deduction, state, local, property taxes, sales taxes, is going to be compressed to 10000 under the new tax law. Not, not and, and so there, there is a possibility for people to lose some of that deduction in future years. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it's much higher downstate, but still, even here in county, they're going to lose it. So if we could come together to ensure that our, our constituents have an opportunity to receive a benefit, hopefully, from the IRS, then that's something we have to do. Not to spoil the moment, but I need, to ask, I need to ask a question about something that I'm guessing the two of you do disagree on related to this. Uh, would it not be better if the governor, instead of allowing us to pay it early, had a lower tax state and New York wasn't affected the same way uh, as it is compared to the rest of the country? Well, I, let's put it this way. We could talk about this for a long time, but if you look at the, the total amount that New York pays to the federal government compared to what we get back, we are a giving state because we actually pay more to the federal government than what we receive in benefits. A lot of people find it hard to believe, but you can actually look at the numbers and see how much money goes to New York, New York State residents, compared to what we pay in federal taxes. Uh, I've had my issues with this tax reform bill for some time. I know that there, uh, it's a, I'll say this, the final bill is a little bit better bill than what was originally proposed in the House and is a little bit better than some of the provisions in the Senate. I still think in the long run it's a bad bill for our country. Uh, the tax cuts for individuals expire in 2027, but they are permanent for corporations. So, uh, and we're adding $1.4 trillion to the deficit. That's money that we gotta pay one way or another, and that's not a good thing for our country in the long run. So I've got a lot of issues with the tax reform bill. Uh, this is not so much talking about the tax reform bill as what we can do to try to help our constituents out in these final few days of this year so that they can get a, an additional benefit that they might lose in the future in all likelihood based on the SALT deduction for every county would lose because that's the average amount. There are some people the average, their SALT deduction is going to be $6,000 and therefore they're not going to lose out in the future. There's other people whose SALT deductions may be $20,000 and they would lose out a lot. So that's what we're here to work on. No, I mean I think we, we've covered this issue ad nauseum, I and mean, we've talked about it. Dave, I've been on your show, my, from my perspective, praising uh, this tax bill. I think it's a benefit. I think it's positive for taxpayers. But we're here to discuss that important issue of giving taxpayers the opportunity to pay the bill if it is their choice early. Uh, and I think that should be the focus today, that a lot of different people from many different offices 
Republicans, Democrats came together, do what's best for taxpayers, and at least give them the option uh, to pay their taxes. Can you recommend? You know, one thing I want to know: this is not does not pertain to school taxes. Schools, well, first off, it's a wholly different schedule. They work not on a calendar year. They're, they basically do their taxes on a school year. So if you're looking to pay your school taxes early, we cannot help you on that. They don't even have school budgets in for the next year to determine what their tax rates would be. And if you look at your taxes in total and you compare where you're paying your taxes, most people, the majority of their taxes go to school taxes, not county or town taxes. And therefore, if you're thinking you're going to be able to get a benefit by prepaying your, your school taxes, that is not the case. And we want people to understand, if they come in to pay their taxes, whether it's Erie County, the cities, or the towns, we're talking solely about the city taxes and the county taxes and the town taxes, not school taxes. Mr. Mahiwa, can you reconcile saying, you know, it's a good bill um, on one hand, on the other, had to scramble... <coughs> so that this benefit could be available to people this year, won't be available next it's year, totally, the year after. Yeah, it's a totally separate function pertaining to the executive order from the governor. As the county executive mentioned, that basically trumped our, our county tax law. This is an option that was available because of the executive order of the governor and the fact that everyone at this podium and behind it worked their tails off to make it possible for taxpayers. Again, uh, it's not a discussion pertaining to the pros or cons, we, under the law, made this option available for taxpayers. It is their choice whether or not they pursue it. And as I mentioned before, in my office, we received a lot of calls from taxpayers, financial planners, saying, what are the options? Uh, and before the executive order, we didn't have any. Uh, now that we do, now we do. And it's wholeheartedly up to the taxpayers of Erie County whether or not they want to take advantage of what we put in place here in Erie County. Could either of you speak to taxpayers' concerns about how much it's costing them to implement this executive order? Um, I don't think it's costing us anything else. Uh, we would have to have done the work anyway, so with the tax collectors. The only issue is whether we had the staff available to do it, and our staff came in on, on days that they originally had <coughs> scheduled off. I don't believe it's going to cost us anything more to implement it. I can't speak for the towns. And, but they normally would have had staff there to collect it and do this work anyway. It's just expediting the process. All right. Merry All Christmas, everyone. Right. Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year. Any off topics? Uh, yeah, but I don't mean to trouble everybody. Go ahead. Okay. Um,